which is usually more than I normally read, I suppose, but this is what we feel led to do today. Find this in the book of Joshua, chapter 1 and verse 1. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun. Moses minister saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now that therefore arise and go over this shore, thou and all thy people into the land which I will do good to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I had said unto Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, of the land of the Hittites, unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. God pretty well laid it out, didn't he? Amen. As to what would belong to them. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life, and I will be with and I, as I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. I like those words, don't you? Amen. What great words are in God's Bible. Be strong and of a good courage. And for unto this people shall thou divide unto the inheritance of the land, which I swear unto thy father to give them. Only be thou strong, very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not it, turn not from it to the right hand nor to the left, that thou mayest prosper wheresoever thou go. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, and thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then shalt, and thou shalt have a good success. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage, be not afraid, neither be dismayed. For we need those words today, no? Amen. For the Lord thy God is with thee, wheresoever thou goest. Amen. Brother Bruce, take us to the Lord in prayer, please. Our most gracious Lord and Heavenly Father and Lord, as we come to Thee, Lord, today, we come to You in praise. For the, for the cross, Lord, that shed blood. Thank You, Lord, for Picking us up out of the more he claims us sin and giving us. Yes, Lord, yes. Giving us that hope of someday to be at home with thee. Mm -hmm. Truly, we thankful, Lord, for all the promises, Lord, in thy word. No one realizing, Lord, this day that they're ours. As we journey to this Walk of life, we pray, God, that you just touch. Have thy way, Lord. Yes. We know and realize, Lord. Yes. As we walk through the valleys, Lord, thy loving hand is with us. Yes, Father, thank you. Lord, we truly thank you, Lord, for, for that, Lord, this day. Now, Lord, we pray, God, that you just touch. May we have open hearts, Lord. The doors of our heart be open that we'll have a closer walk with thee. Lord, now I pray, God, that you just touch. Have thine way as you go on through this life, sir. May we live a life that be pleasing unto thee. That we'll ever be pleasing, Lord. That we'll be a light to a lost and dying world. And we'll pray you we as in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Bruce. Amen and amen. There's several things that I'd like to mention today as we gather around the Word of God. 
there are many people, and probably all of us in this church today, <laughs> are aware of the fact that Joshua was there when they walked around, walked around the city walls of uh, Jericho, and uh, God had led him to do so and told him what to do and how to do. And he did that, and the walls of Jericho came down. We know that, and we contribute that to him and his leadership so that we know those things are commonly known about Joshua. We know that there are some more important facts about Joshua than just the fact that he was at Jericho. And let me make this thought and this comment in passing. Jericho is a type of the world. And uh, Ai that they went to later is a type of the flesh. They were defeated at Ai. There were several that lost their lives at Ai because they did that in their will, their power, their might, rather than God's will. Amen. And so we have to live our lives in front of the world. That's our Jericho. And God will bring down any strongholds that might try to arise against us. And then God will give us, by leadership of His Spirit, the authority and the ability by the Spirit of God to be able to live a life in this body, in this flesh, that is pleasing unto the Lord. Amen. 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 So the story lies there, and the events as they took place, they are relevant to us as much today as they were in that day, and let's apply them properly. We know that he was with Moses as he uh, went there to Mount Sinai when God gave Moses the Ten Commandments that we have in the Bible that were given to the children of Israel as the moral law and the standard of their lives as they walked in the wilderness and walked in the journey from Egypt into the promised land. And so they were to abide by those and they were to live by them and they were to keep them and meditate upon them in their heart both day and night. That's what the scripture says. And so you and I, we have to take the words of God, the words of Christ, those things that we've heard and those that we've hid within our heart. David said, let me hide it in my heart that I might not sin against you. Amen. He said, let your word be a lamp to my feet and a light unto my pathway. So we're to do the same today. We're to take God at his word. And his word is true. Amen. There's no lie. There's no error. There's no shadow of turning. God said, I'll not forsake you to Joshua. God said the same thing to us. Amen. I'll not forsake you. Be of strong. Be of good courage. For I'll be with you always, even unto the end. So we know this is true. And he was one of the twelve that were chosen out to go and spy out the promised land as a young man. He was given a great responsibility. Let me say this today. Young people do have great responsibilities. Amen. Even at age and youth itself, sometimes as we go through those years, and we learn so often by mistakes that we make. We're not perfect when we got saved. We were given, we were forgiven of our sins, but we did, we did not become perfect in this flesh. Amen. And so we had to realize this and help and encourage our young people. And I believe Moses encouraged Joshua as they sat around and they spoke with one another. May I say this to you? That there have been many multitudes of preachers that I've known that have encouraged me down through the years, have shared things with me, and part of their life is in me because I've heard their messages, I've heard their words, I've heard their truth, and the same things with you, preachers that you've heard and you've respected down through the years. You've hidden things in your heart that they said to you that will be there as long as you live. You'll think of them and respect them and honor them, and rightfully so. It should be that way. But we think here, as he was one of the twelve, he was one of the two that said that we can go in and take the promised land. I believe today that you and I are headed to a city whose builder and maker is God. I stand on that today, don't you? Jesus said, I go and prepare a place. I believe that. I stand on that today because it is true. Amen. His name is the same as Jesus in the New Testament. You say, well, what is that? His name meant salvation. 
and in no other name can man be saved except by the name of Jesus. Amen. May I say to us today that God has so many parallels in his Bible as we read it and study it and meditate upon it. And God begins to show us these things. He didn't change from the Old Testament to the New. He just made us a new way. He made us a new creature. He gave us a new way of life. He gave us new life, thank God. And it's called eternal life in Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm grateful for that today. Then there came the day when Joshua himself had to take the leading role for the children of Israel. There comes time in our life when we have to take responsibilities for what we do, what we say, and the way that we do. And so here he is. You can almost say it was graduation day for Joshua. Moses had taken them as far as he could go. I believe that's true today in this world. There are times when we can go as far as we can go, but then someone else can take that further. So we have to understand that and have to accept that. That's the way that God says it has to be done. When the mother and Jesus, here in this, let me read this in the second verse. Uh, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise and go over this Jordan. Thou and all thy people under the land which I do give unto them, even to the children of Israel. God made it plain that this was for the children of Israel. It wasn't just for anybody. God designated this property for the children of Israel. Amen. And God has made some places in this world that are designated just for you. You and I are to cover the places God has given us by the sole of our feet. Amen. Wherever it is, it could be in our church, it could be in our community, it could be somewhere in this world where God has put you that you have that place under God's control. May I say the witness of our life, the words of our testimony, and the strength that goes with us in hardships, times, trials, and disappointments can show others that the Lord Jesus Christ is still alive and still on the throne Amen. and sitting on the throne of our heart. Thank God for that today. Amen. Here, God had a plan for Joshua's life. I believe every human being that's ever been born on this world, God had a plan for them. Yes. Some have accepted, others have rejected. Some have followed, others have disobeyed. May I say to us today, Christianity is not just being saved, it's living a life pleasing unto the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we know this as we look at it. His future seemed to be all about slavery. There when his mother held him in her arms and she was a slave in Egypt, he was born into slavery. He thought, I'm sure as he grew up as a very young boy, that this is the way my life will be. He looked at others and he seen they were involved. They were slaves. They were having to do what someone else told them to do. They had no life. They had no freedom. They could not live as they chose to live. But God had a different plan. Amen. So I see this and I think about it. And likewise, you and I are born in slavery. We were born in the slavery of sin. And God's the only one that could set us free. Amen. We were born into that bondage that hung around us, that designated that if we died, we'd die and go to hell. But God said, no, I've got a different plan for your life. I've got a plan that's so perfect that it will last through all eternity. Amen. It'll never go away. It'll be the same today as it was yesterday. It'll be the same tomorrow as it is today. I'm grateful for that today, aren't you? Amen. Joshua was delivered. He was delivered just exactly the way you and I are. He was delivered from slavery and from bondage that night at the Passover that spoke to us in the book of Numbers when the blood of Jesus Christ was applied to the little and the doorpost and they gathered themselves in the house with the lamb and they partook of that lamb and the death angel was going through. May I say to you today, if you're saved today, the death angel will have to pass your house. But he can't come in. The Lord will come get you one day, but death won't get you. You'll just go to sleep in the arms of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. 
For you died when you bailed upon your knees before the Lord. You became a new creature in Jesus Christ. You became a person that has eternal life, everlasting life. Amen. And the Lord take care of that. Amen. So we both were delivered, all of us. Those that are listening, if you're saved, you were delivered from the bondage of sin and death. Thank God for that today. Amen. Amen. But it's through the blood of Jesus. First Peter chapter 1, verses 18 and 19. We were not bought with corruptible things, but by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Now God has a plan, and he begins to reveal this plan. Notice what he says as he speaks to Joshua. Moses died. Joshua became a leader. If somebody's shoes before you, you'll have to fill them. I made a statement in the revival that I wouldn't shop, that I would not swap shoes to walk in another man's life. There was a young man there that said, as he looked around at new people that were there, he said, there's some people that I would he was looking at what they had, their money, their wealth, and all that sort of thing. But later that week, God zeroed in on him. And this came from him as his testimony. He said, I know what the preacher was preaching about when he said he would not swap shoes with any man to walk in his shoes. You see, I know who's walking in these shoes. That's why I wouldn't swap. Amen. If I had to take that life for mine, that's why I wouldn't swap. So I say to you today, as God said to Joshua there, that he became a leader. He, I'm sure he never imagined. May I say this in all honesty? I knew there was something in my in my life as a young, very young person. I couldn't put my hand on it. I couldn't put my finger on it, but Preacher Bishop's wife, she did. She called me aside. She was sitting on the front pew. And she called me aside from a Christmas program. And she got a hold of me like this. And she said, Norris, God has a very special work for you to do. I'll never forget that because I believe God was using her to show me that in my life it would be more than just to exist. Amen. Now I say to us as Christians today, God has something special for you. And just as she laid her hand upon my shoulders and she spoke those words to me, she's a wonderful lady, loved by many, many, many people, Amen. no doubt. Sister Ruby. Listen, <clears throat> he'd never imagined this was going to happen to him. I could never have imagined I'd be standing here today. If I'd looked at this as a young man when I was in my 20s, to me it would have just been a building, a church building. I would have recognized it for what it is. But to stand here today, God giving me the privilege and you giving me the opportunity to stand here as a pastor of the church is beyond my comprehension. But God did it. Amen. God did it. And all I wanted was to mind the Lord. And God allowed it to happen. Amen. God has a plan. May I say it's a good plan it's a plan you can know. You don't have to imagine. You don't have to dream about it. You can know God's plan for your life. It's a plan that you can get in on. How do you do that, preacher? You get in it by totally surrendering to the Lord's will. Amen. It'll never happen until you do. You can be saved. You can go on living like you want to live. If you're not totally surrendered to the Lord's will, you will never give in on God's plan for your life. You have to submit yourself to the Lord. You have to say, Lord, here am I. Use me. 
Amen. And God will begin to use you. Am I right? Amen. I believe so. Amen. It's a plan that's available immediately. It's not something you pay into and get dividends off of and 20 years from now you collect it. You can move in on it immediately. Amen. Thank God for that today. Amen. It's something that God has provided for us and we alone stand in his all as we think about it. I listened this morning for a short period of time while we was getting ready to come to the church. And I listened and heard Dr. Stanley make the statement, how many folks have come to the Lord and then turned and went back or went away from the Lord and lived a life that was nothing more than a disaster. And that's true. I've seen it and you've seen it. But they got out of God's will and the plan God had for their life, and it turned into a disaster. Stay in God's will. If you don't know it, find it. Get on your knees. Pray. Ask God to show you. Ask God to help you. Immediately, he will begin to do so. Well, preacher, you don't know me. I don't need to know you. God already knows you. Amen. And he said, come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Amen. That's exactly what God meant. Amen. 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 Let me go along very quickly as we hurry along. The Bible said and tells us that we serve a great God. Would you agree? Amen. This God is so great, he created the place he wanted them to be. He put them where he wanted them to be. He kept them where he wanted them to be. He took care of them where he wanted them to be. He kept the enemies out. Over 2,000 years, God's kept them where he wants them. He may not be in total control, but he is in total control of Jerusalem. Amen. 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 May I say this to you. It all comes back to the Bible and the ecology that's taught to us in the book of Revelation when it speaks about ten horns and all these things. All of that revolves around this land. Every bit of it about this land. Who wants to be there? Who wants to be in control? God's in control. Amen. Amen. His love is unconditional. God didn't say if, but, or, or. God said, you come to me. I'll take care of you. If no matter what you've done in life, God said, I'll forgive you. Amen. Whatever your challenges are right now that keeps you from coming to Calvary, bowing before the Lord and accepting Christ as your Savior, God said those things will not matter when you bow in my presence and ask me to forgive you of your sins. Amen. God will wipe the slate clean yes. and you'll walk away a new creature in Christ Jesus. Amen. Last of all, God's word was to be the secret of their success. God's word is the secret of our success. Amen. As a church, it's the secret of our success. Amen. As our life, it's the secret of our success. Amen. God said every good and perfect gift cometh down from above, Amen. where there's no variance or shadow of turn. Amen. God said, I'll give to you far greater than you can ever imagine. I can think back, and God's truly blessed my life, my home, my wife, my children, Amen. my grandchildren, my friends, my church family, which are my friends. May I say to us today, there's many books in this world. I can mention a lot of them today. There are a lot of theories. There's a lot of the theological theological books that are written. There are books written about prophecy. There are books written about uh, success. There are books written about everything you can imagine that tries to tell somebody that they have some spiritual incline to them. There's only one book that is written spiritually. That's God's infallible and inerrant word. And we need that book and that book alone. Amen. Amen. Preacher Odell Barnwell said to me the day that he preached the charge to me. He laid his hand upon my shoulders we walked out of the church. And I respected him dearly. And Brother Odell said, one thing I ask you, never let man's writings shine light on God's word. Let God's word shine light on man's writings. And if you'll 
do that, you'll never be led astray Amen. down life's pathway. Amen. We're told in the Bible that there is in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 12, we're told that there is no end to the writing of this book. Now what does that mean, preacher? We may not, we may not have but a copy of the scrolls and so on and so forth that were gathered from the Greek and the Hebrew and the Latin and gave us this book. But there are many other things that God is writing. He's writing those things in the books that are in heaven. And one day those books will be opened. And our life totally will be revealed Amen. before the Lord. As to the good <clears throat> or the bad. Whether it's gold and silver, precious stones, or whether it's wood, hay, and stubble. Amen. We'll see. They'll see. We'll know. God will know. But I strive for this, and I'm sure you do, to hear these words well done. Thy good and faithful son. Amen. Amen. There's some books I suppose that are good. Mm -hmm. I have a library full of them. But I always remember what Preacher O'Dell told me. Some of them I agree, some I don't agree. Some are just pure old dried out books. You read it, no interest, no involvement. It's just something made, somebody made to sell. Isn't it amazing how many politicians are writing books now? I don't need to read the book. I can see what's going on. I'm not blinded to the truth. Jesus said, you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. I believe that. Where the Spirit of God is, there is liberty. God will say, no, that ain't for you. Don't listen to that garbage. They all want to make money. shared with you a thought or two, but that's all. But listen, the most beautiful book in the world is God's Word. You can sit down and read it when you're discouraged. You read it a while, you'll be encouraged. You can read it whenever your heart's broke, and then you'll see in just a little while how that God's right there as a comforter to help you through that time. It's a lamp. David said it's a lamp. It lights a pathway. And we're all on the path. Amen. Amen. So here we go, the last three points. This book reveals God to man. You want to know what he's like? It's in the book. You want to know what he's like? It's in the book. I say you want to know what he's like. If you seek salvation, it's in the book. Amen. If you're looking for a way today to be set free from the bondage of sin, and I know I'm speaking to folks that's watching this, this on the media, I realize that there are all of us that are gathered here, and I believe today that we're saved people, but there's some precious soul left on the somewhere. Just like Charles when he came to me two weeks ago. I shall fell on his knees and God gloriously saved me. Amen. I'm saying there's folks out there that need the Lord. That need what God's got in their life. Amen. Just like I needed it. And God let me have it. Amen. Amen. Next of all, when you seek God's will, His is a perfect will. It's not almost perfect. It is perfect. God's will is perfect. And when we seek His will, it is His perfect will. And last of all, do we really seek His guidance through this pathway of life? That's all that you 
sang earlier. I've I walked through the valleys. I've walked through the rivers. I've been in the low places. Every one of us is faced that. Amen. But would we have to say that God ever left us while we were there? No. I thought of that many that I've known and loved that's gone on to be with the Lord. And I think not too much longer. say to us today, there comes a time in life when you have to realize that sin will take you further than you want to go. Amen. And it'll keep you longer <clears throat> than you want you to stay. That's right. Amen. And God will set you free from the yoke of bondage mm -hmm. and open the bars and let you walk out. Jesus said, for the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. For the Lord hath anointed me to preach this gospel and to the poor. If you heard this today, if you if you know in your heart that the Lord spoke to you, may I say there's a whole church in front of me today that's going to be praying for you. Amen. That God will deliver you and save you. And if you walked away from the Lord, it's time to walk back to the Father's house. That's our prayer. Father, would you take your word and bless it today? Father, thank you for this time, this service, this spirit, God, that's in this place. For all that you do for us, Father, that we look at from time to time and say, Lord, I don't know how you done it, but you did. And God, we give you the glory for that. For the many prayers that we pray, God, and you've answered them. Lord, for the times when we've asked, and, Lord, it's been given to us for the ways that you made a way when there was no way. Lord, we know that our nation today is facing something that we've never had to ever face before. With this virus, Lord, it's touching people, Father, just one after another. But, God, you have the answer. Amen. The answer is not in politics. Amen. It's not in party. It's not in man. It's not in who we are, but what we are. We are Christians that are calling and reaching out to you, Father, for an answer, for this to be answered. God, that you might give man, Lord, the things that he needs to, to accomplish, Lord, just as you have in so many lives before with all these other things, Lord, that we faced with polio, God, all of these others. Lord, you had the answer. And you had the answer for this. Amen. And we ask you, Lord, to keep those safe. God, I pray for the answer. I pray for the truth to come out in the election. I pray, God, not for selfish reasons or for selfish motives, but, Lord, I pray for the truth. Amen. And we ask this in Jesus' precious name. And God's people say it. Amen. Amen.